In this video, I'll show you how you can get started using the pipeline concepts to manage your SAP cloud integration and that it is not too difficult to, to use and you can actually migrate directly to it. So we'll cover a lot of all of these uh, concepts, making it possible for you to explore. Um, so what is the pipeline? It is an open source project by SAP Consulting and SAP product management and the goal is to help customers and the idea here is they as in SAP PI world you had the option to separate processing logic from retry and business logic uh, making it possible to manage uh, this scenarios in a simple way without putting too much logic in and I think that's the key aspects of here creating a generic framework that enables you to simplify the way you're building your integrations um, it's primarily for asynchronous message processing um, that you can use it for and obviously this has been tested uh, by sp to scale to actually show that this is something that you can use for your scenarios and it's a part of the migration recommendations um, about how you can handle asynchronous messages. And the benefit is you don't need to build your own framework to handle a lot of these scenarios because SAP have, have done it. There's a lot of complaints about it. It's over engineer it, it's too complex. But on the other hand, we know the SAP world that it is going to be complex. There's a lot of scenarios in, and we want to make something that simplifies this journey. Good. So what is it? So it consists of a number of different iFlows that SAP delivers as a pre-delivered context uh, package. You have an inbound flow. Uh, so either the message is sent into your system using a generic pipeline. Um, so you, for instance, IDOC, uh, proxies, SOAP, messages like this can go into a generic flow. In this, it'll be put into a queue. You can then ha have a second queue that will pick up if there, it needs to do any conversions on it. You can then do receiver determination, interface determination, and finally, it will once it has figured out where this message needs to go, you'll go to the outbound queue where you can go in and you can modify and, and process this for all the different scenarios. Um, when you're migrating to it, you probably would have some custom SFTP. They would go into this Q1 and be processed here. You can also have some custom conversion flow. This could be file content conversion, stuff like that, that you want to put in or modules that you want to put in before the receiver processing is, is being done. Obviously, it's not has a big impact, uh, as you would in a, an XI world, um, because of a number of reasons. Um, you can also, in some scenarios, just throw the message directly to the Q2. But I guess the idea is to generally make it as generic as possible to everybody know what's going on. Um, there is a part of this that also enables you to skip these two steps. If you know this is a one-to-one -one message processing, you can configure a, a skip that goes directly to this outbound queue. And in this outbound queue, we are then using a process direct to pick up the messages and process and handle them, making it a lot easier for you to, to handle these scenarios. Obviously, we do talk a lot about this in, in migration context, and it does make sense there, but obviously you can also use it for all the other generic processes that you have in your landscape where you want to to separate these uh, these scenarios you can also have multiple different versions of this running simultaneously so you can have one for high priority queues one for low priority queues and this just makes it a lot easier for you to separate the the landscape here i'm just showing the the main queues but you also have dead letter queues that is being created. And if a message fails in the receiver de determination a number of times that you have specified, you it will then go into a dead letter queue and then you can copy the, this dead letter queue into the, the, 
written rule queue and process it like this. And here we have the high priority queues at just a separate set of queues. All of this is configured using the partner directory. Um, and the idea is you can either just, uh, you would use a key here, that's the system plus a message uh, type. And then you have options to define different uh, criteria. Either you have uh, some string parameters or you have um, a routing XSLT that you're defining with with this and in most cases you would have this uh, XSLTs for, for routing, for receivers and for the interfaces. To migrate to, to this it is pretty easy uh, if you're using the FIGAF tool and we'll just show you how to get started with this but let's get started. So the first thing is we go we go into our integration suite here we go under the discover phase and in the discover, we find a package called type pipeline, pipeline generic flows. And when we are picking up this, we just say copy to our own folder. Um, to do this, you on the integration suite should obviously have configured queues. Um, it can run on um, on Neo uh, if you have the the those scenarios configured there. What I'll go now do is I'll go here and then I will deploy uh, these messages. So I'll deploy the script collection. I will. The I'll deploy the inbound. Deploy. Deploy. And the step six, the outbound. All the other ones are just some templates that you don't need to care uh, too too much about. Um, some some templates that you can use and explore. What is it that scenarios like this will will look like? Good. Now we will create a new package. my first pipeline, give it a description, save it, and say cancel. So now we have uh, an iFlow that is being processed here. And what we can then go do is in the FIGAF tool, I already have a, an ICO. I do have some test cases on this and I want to go and migrate this. So I will select it here on the line. I will select that uh, which package it needs to go into my first pipeline. Uh, we will give this a, a name. So two, um, and then we will select a profile here. We'll select pipeline all. We can process check, and now we will see what objects is here, and we will prepare the migration. Here we are defining what are the center systems. It should not be uh, add like D. 100 it needs to be a generic name that you're using for this because eventually you want to transport it and you don't want to change all of these configurations uh, more than necessary it's possible but it adds a lot of complexity if you need to as we had in the pi world have dev or uh, something on it so go with the ep or s4 uh, system names for these scenarios here we can see if what inbound flow we have. If we had uh, content conversion on modules, we would also have a converter flow that we could add here that would give us some extra modification before data was processed. We can go in here and we can configure the, the receiving system. 
we can just call it some ERP if we wanted to. And we can see here it is picking up all of this from the system uh, or from the PI system. And here we have all the different artifacts that's being migrated and some, some things to just check on. We can see the XSLTs that are generated for this. We can see here now it's saying ERP sum is being used here. And here we have the pipeline concepts that is being used. If you want to change this to the name of these iFlows uh, and the flow new, just to show that you can do this. I'm not sure if it will check here. Here we can see it, it does it. And when we change something, we just need to regenerate name, press check to see everything is, is correct. And now we can migrate it. We also like deploy also after migration. We also have the option to use P2P scenarios if we only have this message one uh, for one scenario. So then you cannot have multiple receivers and it will create it simplifying the journey. But let's do it here. We'll select migrate. It will create these artifacts and we will synchronize it, which means FIGAF will have a version of these objects. So now we have the objects and I think I need to go into this one and just make a small change for it to work. Um, so here we have, so here we can see the, the target iFlow that's being generated. We have some generic processing here about it. And here we have the message processing and we do have here the the connection here. I just need to change this to internet and plane and save as version. So it's 1.1, one .1, deploy it. And then we just want to inform FIGAF that there is a new version. So we just press synchronize, which will then trigger a synchronization on this uh, object so we can see what was actually changed between these ones okay now i'm here we can also see we have access to the partner directory here we can see we got the receiver and we got two interface determinations we can check these so we can see the details that we have here we can if we wanted to we can go in and make modifications to it we also have an option if we want to do it more complex we can look at some of these test data that we have and we can see how this would actually process this uh, JSON here that's being sent so if we just change this nothing happens which is good we can just save it and now we will save this and synchronize it back into the tool so we got a version that we know was changed so we can go in we can see receivers here we can see the versions of this and see here compare what was actually changed with this update so this makes it a lot easier for us to monitor what is going on with this okay so now we have migrated the scenario the next is we want to test it so we will go back here we will select the line here we already have a test case for it we will select migrate test case. We will select the test case that we have here. Migrate to CPI flow. We will create a new test suite. My first pipeline. And here we can see the different iFlows that we have been using for this. Um, where we where we can go in and find this is being processed at this specific point in time and this is the iFlow. If you are not migrated this with the FIGAF tool, you need to go into this uh, on the CPI trial here. Here you can then go in and create an iFlow chain name where you can select a sender interface and a, a receiver interface. And that means it will send the message into this. So for instance, if you have an IDOC, you will send, select, send the message into this IDOC generic flow and then process it in these receivers. Okay. So, but since we have migrated, the FIGAF tool knows where to fix the data. So that's all good. 
So now we can go in, we can click test messages, which will then enable us to trigger the messages that has been processed in this uh, landscape and see if they have been processed uh, correctly and everything is working as we would expect it to do. So now I would obviously expect to see some messages in here. Let's see if it's processed here. So we have not received the message yet. There's, it's still doing some polling, which means we does not have the, the complete data yet. That should be done. Um, but maybe there is some challenge because it seems like the message has not been processed here yet. So we can go into our monitoring view here. Let's take it from here. We have the CPI message monitor here. We can see what we have processed. So we can see here we have generated this um, message was sent. It was sent to the receiver uh, processing, but nothing has been processed so far. And I don't know what happened or we forgot to deploy step number five. Maybe that was it or it did not deploy correctly. Let's just check that. Chart here to deploy this. So now we can see it's processing and we can select maybe sometime we can select it again and process it. And now we can see we have some test data here that are compared and we can go in and check the div here it's something about a date we can go in and ignore that because that's obviously never going to be the same we can process our comparison again and now we have actually tested that this pipeline works um, it is completed um, and we have everything in place for for this uh, to work so I hope you got some good understanding about how this works, what's the opportunities that you have when working on this, uh, this scenarios. Um, so if you want to get started, I would recommend that. So here we can see what's going on here. We have the look at the IPO. We looked at the test case that we migrated. We looked at the partner directory and how to manage it. Um, we can obviously also transport this with the FIGAF tool. So we do have transport. We do have also virtualized tenant that enables you to reuse dev also for, for QA. And finally, I would recommend that you go to FIGAF and sign up for a free trial. Get started. Explore what you can actually do and use the tool for. How simple it is actually to run uh, this making it easy for you to manage your SAP integration. Um, and if nothing else, at least you will get an understanding of what what the, it is, how you can use it. I see a lot of customers that are exploring it using the, the web or the APIs, which is a good way to do it, but a little cumbersome with the FIGAF tool. If you go through here, follow this, this guide, it's really easy and you can go in and you can maintain all of these objects. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please uh, like, please share this, this video with the people you think should know more about uh, the pipeline concept. Thank you.